Hey everyone, uh, this is Alex USA Days and we're continuing to learn quality assurance from scratch. Today we're going to talk about test plans. Uh, so we are in module three, we covered types of testing, we're uh, covering today test plans and that's going to be the final video for this third section and then we're going to move into section four on bugs and how to report them. Okay, uh, so what do we know about test plans? So test plan usually is a high level document that includes test strategy and description of required actions and procedures to ensure that product or system meets its designed specifications. Test plan should be based on defined system requirements. So it could be PRD, which is product requirements document, BRD, business requirements document, or SRD, system requirement document. Those requirement documents are normally are prepared by business analyst or product owner or product manager. Uh, test plan may include authors, contacts, responsible parties, revisions, versions, table of contents. Uh, it also might include general requirements, compliance standards, defined scope of testing, definition of pass fail. Uh, it may include strategy for each testing type, for example, like acceptance testing, regression testing, compliance testing, accessibility testing, and so on and testing activities at each stage of the product's life, uh, test objectives. It also may include described test environments, test tools, system test configuration, supported systems. Uh, it might include test diagrams, test flow, pass fail conditions, and sometimes actual tests. So some test plans might be very detailed. I, I'm gonna add some of the links that you see on the screen uh, into the description. So uh, there is an article on Wiki about test plans. It's a little bit outdated and we're gonna open up at the end of the video. And then there's a newer standard uh, for testing and test plans, uh, ISO standard, ISO IEC 29119. There's a link to that on the Wiki as well. And I'm gonna open it and show at the end of the video. Um, you also, if you really want to, you may purchase uh, the newest standard. It's about from $70 to $120, uh, depending on where you buy it. I'm gonna have this link available in the description as well. But normally if you're purchasing a standard, uh, you will be using this for uh, like a major setup, probably in a bigger organization where you want to follow the standard. Definitely that's gonna be done through your employee. Uh, you know, purchasing on its own, just to review it and look at it, I think it's uh, unnecessarily because it still has more of a kind of generic guidance to it. So it's not gonna be like uh, a very defined example that you can straight use for your system. It will always have to adapt uh, to your actual product, right? So what is the purpose of the standard? Uh, the, the purpose of the ICO IEC IEEE 29119 series is to define an internationally agreed set of standards for software testing that can be used by any organization when performing any form of software testing and using any life cycle. So again, it's very uh, high level like generic guidance of how to create test plan. What happens in reality? Uh, so in reality, you will see test plans uh, rarely. They're not always used. Uh, test plans are mostly used in bigger companies with well-established QA processes. So there will be a QA department, uh, you know, the testing cycles, a lot of, all of the processes are already established. They're rarely you're gonna just start on your own, go into the startup and, hey, I'm gonna create this test plan for the company. It might happen though, right? Um, or it is used in regulated industries. So industries that have a lot of regulations that have very specific set of tests, um, your test plans for those industries are gonna be based on the regulations. Sometimes the test plans are gonna be provided based on the regulations, like by third party authorities that oversee your industries, okay? So you'll have to correlate you know, like your testing with those test plans. Um, for smaller, for agile startups, uh, often there's no test plan per se. What uh, happens with startups, you have to rely on project managers, client communications uh, that are recorded uh, and the requirements that are recorded within EPICS as part of an ongoing effort to improve product. So there will be epics that describe the new feature that's being built within those epics. Stories will be created or like so-called features. Uh, 
what have to be implemented with the acceptance criteria, uh, a very high level description of the actual epic, what needs to be done, why it needs to be done, and so on. So based on that, you will be doing your testing activities and like creating your testing approaches, how to test things. Uh, in that case, QA practices may be recorded and managed like through QA common knowledge space, for example, in Confluence. So there will be no test plan, but you'll have a reference point where all the best practices for QA is recorded on how to approach one thing or the other thing. Um, so in that place in Confluence, on the Confluence page, for example, QA processes are modularized and recorded in different sections. So for example, there's knowledge base with bug template and how to file a bug or how to perform regression or prepare a test matrix, stuff like that. And I have a diagram uh, from a test plan. So this is like, a, uh, this the startup doesn't exist anymore. So th this doesn't really matter, but you can oversee how it kind of looked here. Um, so kind of starts here with a story completed by developers. Developers do their unit tests. There's some security verification in place and goes into the stage server uh, where the regression testing is performed. This is one pass and simultaneously kicks off uh, another pass where test cases develop based on the stories uh, or so-called, again, based on the epics and the stories within the epic. Then there's exploratory testing uh, that happens right after the build is in the uh, stage server and the stage environment. Um, then there is acceptance testing. Uh, this is for a specific browser like Chrome. Uh, some of the tests are uh, candidates for automation. There's feature testing, uh, API testing, then cross browser testing for multiple browser supports that happen. Then there's performance and stress testing. Uh, then there's localization uh, verification happening. And then it goes into uh, beta testing and deployment also plus security verification. Um, and then the actual deployment happens. So if in any of those stages of testing, uh, there's a bug, it gets uh, in, into JIRA, the bugs is getting logged, uh, it goes into the backlog for our prioritization, then goes back to development to being fixed, then goes into regression testing and the whole thing kind of starts over, right? If needed. Uh, I think this also can be bypassed with a verification uh, in the stage server and going then into the uh, UET, the beta deployment stage, and then again into the deployment. And then if the bug is found in the deployment, uh, it's a production bug. If it's a production bug, uh, it goes back into Jira, getting logged and getting fixed. All right, so that's just one of the examples for the flows you might have. There's, there's, this is, there's so many different um, factors into what goes into test plan. It depends on the industry, uh, what industry you're going to be work as a tester. Depends on the company size. Uh, depends on the established practices. Uh, some of them are using more like older versions and kind of structurized versions of testing plans. Others moving faster and doing agile kind of a thing. So, but it's a, it's just good to understand what it is and how uh, it might look at the place where you're going to work. So now let's go to the actual uh, wiki links that I was posting. So one of them is for the test plans. Let's open this up. All right. Um, yeah. So. Here it describes, this is older standard IEEE 829 for the test plan structure. So that was back in, uh, there is an a, there is a date here somewhere. 2008 was the latest one. I think after that it moved to a newer standard, right? So 2008. Um, so what stages are for the, for the test plan here that described in the in the Wikipedia. Uh, let me zoom in a little bit more. So test plan, identifier, introduction, test items, features to be tested, features not to be tested, approach, item pass, fail criteria, suspension criteria, test deliverables, test and task, environmental needs, responsibilities, staff and training needs, schedule, uh, risk and uh, contingencies, approvals. So this is this is per older uh, standard that was back in 2008, like the latest version of it. 
Now, with the newer version, uh, what you will see, let's open this up. Uh, so you'll see uh, organizational test process for documentation. So there's a policy for testing, uh, test strategy now. You will see test plan including test strategy, test status, test completion. So in the test management process and documentation, you will see uh, also dynamic test process and documentation. So design specification, test case specification, procedure specification, test data requirements, test readiness report, test environment requirements, test environment readiness report, actual result, test result, execution log, incident reports. So it gets more complex. Uh, it's not an easy task to create a test plan and maintain test plan. Ideally, you want to have a generic test plan that uh, not does not change a lot. It covers a lot of um, stages and what actually happens, how to react and respond to certain things. But you know, it's a uh, it's 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 pretty. It can get pretty complex and uh, can get a lot of parties to work on that test plan. So it could be a whole QA department that you know. Uh, managing test plan, adding stuff there, making sure it's up to date, everything's covered, uh, and it also depends on the range of the activities that you know needs to be done uh, for specific product like testing activities. Okay, so yeah, essentially this is it. Um, let me know if you have any questions. Hopefully, you know this was helpful, um, and you learned today a lot about test plans and. Uh, how to implement them to your place, to your work. Uh, yeah, this was Alex USA Days. Thanks for watching and bye-bye.